Well, let's chat more about the aviation industry and safety. Captain Mark Weiss joins me now in studio. He's Director of International Operations at Reagan Aerotech. Good to see you again, Mark. Nice to see you. Thank you. So for those of us who, who are still trying to catch up with everything, where do things currently stand with Boeing's investigation? Well, Boeing is only part of the investigation team. They're, the regulatory agencies globally are all taking a part of this. Uh, right now, they're focusing on one particular area. We've all talked about that, the MCAS system, which is a system designed to compensate for the uh, new placement of the engines and the, the size of the engines. Uh, but the investigations, keeping in mind that while this looks like the, the critical area to focus on, the investigations are also looking at other areas, mostly to rule it out. So one thing that keeps coming up is this idea of the training. So help us understand from an industry perspective the sort of economic and policy decisions that factor into the type of training that pilots receive. Training, look, training is a very critical part of every airline, and it's a, a major uh, source of a revenue draw, so to speak. Um, if I was to fly a three-day trip for my airline, that, and I'm going to go through training, it means that they have to take me off a trip, pay me to be somewhere in a simulator, in a ground school to get the background on what I'm going to be learning. They have to put me up at a hotel. They have to take me off of my trip, have somebody else fly that trip. Uh, and, you know, it's a cascading effect. Now, with new airplanes, uh, uh, typically a course is anywhere from four to six or seven weeks long in duration. So it's not that you're rushed through a program. Right. There's just a lot, of, a lot of information that you have to absorb and you have to understand. And the period of time, well, that may seem like a long period of time, it's very compressed because of the numbers of systems that you have to understand. But keep this in mind. When you walk into an airline, typically here, at least in the United States, you have a background in aviation. Hmm. You're a pilot. You've been one for years. So your experience level is high. That's something that could be very different in, in other carriers around the globe. So an issue that's come up is, is whether or not we've become overly reliant on some of this computer-assisted technology. Is that a fair assessment, though? It, it really is in some ways that you don't, you know, the computer can take over the airplane. You have to understand what you're doing. This isn't the first accident if these are determined to be from that MCAS system. These are not going to be the first accidents that have happened because of automation and pilots not understanding that automation. So, you know, going back over the years, a lot of various companies that people are very familiar with throughout the globe have sustained accidents because of automation and what perceived as poor flight training for the pilots. But sometimes you don't know there's a problem until there's a problem. Now, a lot of people are wondering about the aviation safety standards. Are they where they should be? Well, it's always something that you want to make better. It's, it's something that's a target in front of you all the time. Uh, so they're good. Do they have to get better? Always have to get better. Um, I was very fortunate. I remember flying with a very senior captain on a very large airplane that we had. Uh, and he was getting close to retirement. And he would say after the end of every flight, I learn something new every time I get into the airplane. Certainly something to, to keep in mind. Um, now, one thing I do want to look at is this idea of the relationship between regulators and the industry and the sort of reliance they have on each other. Tell us a bit more about that. Well, here, at least in the United States, the FAA is the regulatory agency that deals with certification of aircraft. Uh, Boeing is the largest manufacturer here. Uh, and really what happens is that these airplanes are so sophisticated and the engineering that goes into them is, is well, the, the FAA doesn't have enough staff that, under, that can do all of the work. They have to rely on the engineers at, the, at Boeing, in this case, to kind of help them through that process. Now, Boeing uh, goes back to the FAA for the certification, but really it's the Boeing engineers that help the FAA engineers go through the system with them. So it's a kind of a hand-in-glove operation. 
All right, thank you. Always good to have you on. Captain Mark Rice, Director of International Operations at Reagan Aerotech.